Hey Falcons, welcome back. Today we have our second student panel of the season. We're going to hear directly from some of our fellow Falcons on the experiences, activities, and strategies they use to become career ready. We are lucky enough to have four of your peers with us to talk about how they got career ready as they're approaching graduation. So we're gonna start it off and I'd like each of the panelists to introduce themselves today. Um, I'm McKenna, I'm with Career Services and serve as a Tune In Tuesday hostess. I'm Mark Kortbein, I'm a senior here at UW-River Falls, majoring in crop and soil science. And I'll be graduating this spring. My name is Lauren Miller and I'm also a senior here at UWRF. I am majoring in social work and I will be graduating in May. My name is Jonah Meyer. I am a double major here at the University of Wisconsin River Falls where I study marketing communications and communication studies and I much like these two will also be graduating in the spring. My name is Rose Helland. I'm a marketing communications major. I have a Spanish minor. And again, like everyone else, I'm graduating this May too. Well, let's jump right in. So as do we have a countdown established to graduation? I haven't done that yet. Lauren, you do. What, how far away? I think when I was talking to my mom this weekend, it was like 62-ish kind of days. So around there. Wow, we're getting, we're getting so close. Um, so let's start off. I am curious with the topic of being career ready. I'm interested in understanding what organizations, activities, experiences, each of you had that while you were involved at um, UW River Falls. Yeah, so during my time here at UW River Falls, I've had the opportunity to be involved in uh, several different organizations and then also be on some of the judging teams that the um, College of Ag offers. So um, the first organization that I was involved in was a Collegiate Farm Bureau. And then the other organization was uh, the UW River Falls Crop and Soil Club. And Crop and Soil Club, I did have the opportunity to serve as an officer for three years. Um, starting off, I served as the fundraising chair starting right away in my freshman year. And then I served as the vice president. And then this past year, I had the opportunity to serve as the president. Um, and then the two judging teams that I was involved in, um, I was part of the soil judging team, uh, my freshman, sophomore, and junior year. And then as well as the crop judging team I've been on uh, this past year um, and that when I was a junior. So looking forward, we actually have a, a judging competition we're going to in Nebraska this weekend. So I'm pretty excited to get out. Yay. And nothing like being president of an organization during a global pandemic. I'm sure that was, that um, added some, some skills to the back pocket for you as well. Yes, uh, definitely a, a new experience coming um, from being around the, the club when it was um, normal operation back before the pandemic and then kind of having to learn how to run it after um, COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, um, throughout my time at River Falls, I've been involved in multiple different um, clubs and organizations. Um, I have been involved with um, Campus Crusades for Christ, so um, crew for short. Um, I have been involved with the Love Your Melon Club, where I was served as the, um, one of the officers. I also am currently involved with Alpha Omicron Pi Sorority, where I served um, as an officer um, the first semester after I joined, which was a really opening and awesome experience. Um, trying to think of what else. Um, I also am currently an RA in Crabtree. So. Nice. Yeah, um, much like these two, over my four years here at the university, I've definitely been organized in a, um, been involved in a lo long list of organizations and um, a bunch of different clubs and things like that. 
Um, anywhere from, I, I think intramurals is something I, I really got in, invested in. I've been in a large list of intramurals from volleyball to ultimate frisbee. Um, other than that, I think my first kind of taste of starting to get involved around campus was probably during my time as um, in the oversight and rules committee. This was kind of something that segued me into being very involved in the student government association like I am today. Um, today, I currently sit as the director of marketing communications on the um, student government association after just being a senator for a couple of years uh, before. Um, in addition to that, I am currently, once I started getting comfortable with kind of just the inner workings of the university, I actually went out uh, to set up and establish um, an uh, on-campus org, being the Super Smash Bros Club, in which I am the acting president. So that's a super great group of people I get to hang out with, and we just kind of come together. We run weekly tournaments and things like that. It's a bunch of fun. And um, as of recent, I have also become a... Um, a social media and events intern for the Office of Student Involvement. Nice. That um, uh, takes up a lot of my time now and is a super, super great office, has so many great people in it. And um, we're basically responsible for setting up a bunch of the events around campus, anywhere from finals fest to just the weekly bingo. Yeah, I, similar to Lauren, I'm also an RA in Crabtree at the moment which this is our first year being RAs. And it's really interesting during a pandemic because I got used to seeing everything that my RAs were able to do event-wise and socializing, connecting. So that's kind of been fun to figure out and navigate. It's been a really good experience. I love my team. I love my residents. I'm a huge craft person. So making Jordax is really fun for me, actually. Um, I'm also a tour guide on campus. So as a marketing communications major, that's a really good opportunity to essentially market the school that I love and get to educate prospective students about all the good stuff that goes on here. I'm also a member of the honors program. So I've joined clubs associated with that, like the Collegiate Honor Society. That's meant to help you get volunteer hours and help you fulfill the pillars of that too. So kind of got like a good mix of things going on throughout my school year. I'll say all four of you are super busy and I'm sure the, the weekly agendas you're scheduled out and running back to back with all kinds of different activities. So Lauren, what additional experiences have you taken advantage of in your time at River Falls outside of things on campus? Yeah, absolutely. So um, a part of the social work program here at UWRF, we in order to graduate, we have to complete a 400 hour internship. It used to be more, but due to the pandemic, we shortened it um, just with like different situations and stuff. Um, so right now I'm currently um, finishing up that internship. I am working at an agency in Stillwater, Minnesota in their um, caregiving and aging um, department where I um, get to help people um, with different resources, as well as um, I get to help plan events and host events for caregivers of people with Alzheimer's and dementia. So it has been a really eye-opening and very rewarding experience. So. Yeah, for sure. Kind of um, segueing off that, I, I think, um, so myself being somebody who is obviously in the major of marketing communications, a lot of the experiences and things I've been career prepping myself with um, involve a lot of just kind of like content creation, you know, just get um, joining campaigns, initiatives, just things to be able to slap my name on and be able to say I was a part of, you know, really helped out with so that I could eventually bring that up to potential employers in the future. So um, I think an advantage I've definitely gotten from starting to get very involved was just kind of that um, my name would be flying around the air when people were in need of things kind of revolving marketing that I really appreciate. Um, a great example of this is this summer, um, obviously before, uh, before this was a kind of our first pandemic year as a university, the school, you know, we were very just trying to get ready, get prepared, make sure the communication was clear to the students. So I actually got to be part of the UWRF Friends. It's like the 90s sitcom Friends. So this was basically a select group of students where we came together and we actually produced a, um, a several video, um, basically Instagram TV storyline with a bunch of orientation type information that first year students would need to know, but might have missed because obviously a lot of these orient in-person orientations were canceled. So that was super cool. Um, you know, like I said, that was just another example of a time that I got an opportunity to help manage a social media account, just kind of prepare myself with things that I might find myself facing within the real world. 
Um, in addition to this, I am currently active in the Anti-COVID COVID Club, which is kind of a, um, an Instagram and student run campaign, basically dedicated to just communicating all the campus related COVID news to the students. So again, just by getting um, previously involved, when people are kind of looking for some students who'd be eligible or interested in these type of things, they kind of got brought to my door and, you know, I got an opportunity to work on some really amazing projects. Um, something else I really want to speak highly of in just kind of, I think is an amazing experience is just my, um, the, the marketing communication program all around. Something myself and I know a lot of other Mark Commerce really hold high in the program is that it gives you a lot of opportunities to work in real world kind of environments. Um, two examples that really pop out in my head are some of the courses you can take, one of which was a, um, a sports management class in which the entire semester, you basically simulated what it would be like to market a minor league baseball team. Everywhere from the creation of the name and logo to even having like a 3D CAD render of the stadium, you would think out all these details and it was a really great in-depth, you know, view of what this kind of world looks like. And um, yeah, like I mentioned, the whole class was just kind of leading up to one big presentation at the end. So it really was just great you know, real world getting ready for these kind of like, you know, um, brand presentations and things of that nature, I thought did a really good job. Um, another example being would be a branding class in which uh, one semester we actually got an opportunity each week we'd basically give like a branding pitch on how to rebrand something. And um, one week we actually were approached by Boyce, a small town in Wisconsin by the name of Boyceville that actually was looking to rebrand their town. So um, myself and my group actually got to go out there, do a bunch of market research. They were super helpful. And they actually had a couple um, residents give us a tour of the town, really kind of help us understand the community feel and how to you know, properly communicate that to an audience and market it. And then we did end up getting to give our pitch to a committee that formed and actually came to campus in River Falls that was made up of several faculty members and just people from around the, um, around the Boysville community. So my, um, the Marcom program all around has definitely been a fantastic experience in career readiness. Wonderful. Yeah, I definitely agree with Joan on that one as a MarCom student as well. Um, similar to Lauren too, the MarCom program actually requires that you have an internship before you graduate. So because of that, I had an internship with TCF Bank this past summer. Um, I was a marketing automation intern, which is not really something that I anticipated ever like doing with my life because that's email marketing. And I was, I was like, no, I want to do social media. I want to stay current with all of that. Um, but I enjoyed it a whole lot more than I thought I would. I gained so many different skills that I didn't have, like with HTML coding. I learned a lot of different platforms like Slack, Paradigm, Marketing Cloud, a lot of good stuff there too. So I don't think that I would have gotten that opportunity or pursued that if I hadn't had to have an internship for my program as well. And with this internship, it was really nice because I loved my boss so much. And trying to get a job out of college, she's been so helpful with giving me people to network with, connect to. I mean, I've probably reached out to like three, four or five different people that she has recommended I do who are in like fields that I'm interested in, like content creation and copywriting. Um, so connecting with those people on LinkedIn, setting up a Zoom time to chat with them. I mean, those are all great skills that I got from having a three month summer internship. That's awesome. And what's the number one way jobs are found? Networking. <laughs> so how awesome is that? Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I was uh, lucky to be a part of too is uh, Crop and Soil Club is part of a, a national uh, kind of student organization called SASIS. And that stands for Students of Agronomy, Soils and Environmental Sciences. And that organization has a spring and a fall meeting every year. And so I've been able to travel around the country to these different conferences um, throughout my time at UWRF. And one of the requirements from the college to go to the meeting in the fall um, is to have um, participation in a contest. So my sophomore year when the competition was out in Baltimore, Maryland, um, I was in the club poster contest. And so what that was is me and another member from the club created a poster um, advertising uh, one of the events that the club does and then how we build up our members and then have an impact on campus and in the community. And so then we would go out and present that poster in front of judges and then other students from colleges around the nation um, so we could get ideas and kind of be sounding boards for each other about how we could improve our clubs. Um, and then my junior year, I was able to conduct a research project with Dr. Joanna Newman out at the lab farm 
um, that I got to present then in a, uh, another poster contest down in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, so down there, I presented for judges again, and then students could come up and ask questions about the research or other uh, professors from colleges for graduate school. Um, so it's really a great networking opportunity uh, for me to go out and meet people from around the nation and say, I wanted to go to graduate school. I maybe talk to a professor that could potentially um, have me as a graduate student around the nation or just um, a lot of networking with industry professionals because there's a trade show at all the conferences. And so I could look for jobs or um, just kind of any interesting facts that I could learn while I was there. What I'm loving is that there's just such a well-roundedness to the variety of your experiences. We've talked about internships, oops. We've talked about professional development. So I guess I would be interested in understanding of everything you've done, whether it's on campus or off, what has been the most meaningful experience and why Jonah, why don't you kick us off with that question? Yeah, absolutely, McKenna. Um, so, you know, this is a tough question. This is kind of like choosing, you know, who's your favorite child, but, you know, I want to answer it. So I, I will, in fact, pick one. And I got to say, out of everything that I've been doing that I feel um, is intrinsically to me the most rewarding is definitely my work with student involvement as a social media and events intern. Uh, the reason I say this is I think being in this position just kind of gives me an opportunity to deliver the most meaningful end product basically to the student body, which is in the form of events, activities, and just really cool and fun things. Um, yeah, the reason I think this is just so rewarding in my eyes is just I really um, love getting to communicate with students and just kind of try to provide a um, the ideal college experience and, you know, experiences of that nature that I know I've had and, you know, just kind of make campus as enjoyable place for everyone else because, um, you know, if you talk to a lot of people and ask them kind of why they came to River Falls, a main recurring answer that you will always hear, one of the first words we always hear is, um, is this idea of community. The fact that people come together are, are happy to be together, be students. And um, it's this, this sense of family that even is kind of closer than like a peer mentality. And that, I think that really reigns true at some of these events. I mean, even this year in kind of a COVID world, we've obviously had to shift a lot to online events but we still do have some hybrid things that give students an opportunity to come in. So even if we're, you know, sitting in the Falcon's nest, handing out chicken wings, just getting to see students come in and just be super hyped to, you know, get chicken wings and do our online events for that day is just definitely extremely rewarding. The Makers Nights have been a huge hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, Jonah kind of touched on it earlier, but I honestly think the most meaningful experiences I've had here are in the classroom. Um, I'm currently in the branding class that Jonah was talking about, and our first project was to rebrand the Marcom program itself. And uh, when I was sitting there thinking about it with my group, we really focused on the two main ideas of being future forward and getting those experiences the experiences that you're gonna get in the classroom of working on real life projects. If you get like a real client in your classroom, I know in my social media marketing class, I actually helped to rework the social media for a small business in St. Paul. Um, it's called Loving Cup Teas. So that was like a really great experience, something to help boost that resume and add to that portfolio, which is why like getting all these in-class experiences and having such a wide variety of classes is really what I think has been the most meaningful for me. Yeah, I'm with Jonah on this one. It's really hard to choose one experience that really stands out over the rest. Um, I guess uh, the one that comes to mind for me um, is kind of being president of the Crop and Soil Club. But kind of like you and I had talked about right away, it was uh, kind of difficult uh, to learn how to change everything when, once COVID hit. Um, kind of for two years as an officer, I learned how the club operated. Um, in normal times and kind of all how to plan the different events that we do. And then once COVID hit, um, having to kind of change all that um, and learn how to adapt with COVID. Um, so just learning how to adapt and kind of roll with the punches, I think is kind of what made it the most meaningful for me and being able to come together with our officer team and really build a, a good bond with them and the rest of our members as we tried to navigate through the rest of the semester and then this past fall as well on how we could have a meaningful experience for everyone but still be be safe and have fun. 
Well, and I think there's some overlap from your experience in terms of transitioning to the workforce that you'll be doing in a couple in a couple of months um, to figure out how to establish that engagement, maintain the connection when you may be finding yourself still in a remote work environment. I'm, it's so lots of overlap and and marketable skills that, that you'll be able to pitch. Lauren, what about you? Yeah, so similar to Jonah and Mark, it's like picking your favorite child. I've had so many meaningful experiences um, from River Falls, but I think one that sticks out to me the most is going Greek. Um, I River Falls' Greek community is such a tight knit, small, um, but meaningful um, community. I have gained so many experiences, raised thousands of dollars for our organizations and philanthropies. So just being involved in such a awesome community is something that not only has been there for me, but will continue to be there for me for years to come, so. Um, Rose, let's talk a little bit, let's transition to talk about what we've learned from some of these experiences. So what would you say would be some of the skills that you'll take with you? Yeah, I've always considered myself to be an outgoing person. I'm a huge people person a long time, just like it isn't in my vocabulary. So uh, with that, I always thought I'd just be really good at talking to like random people and strangers. Um, yeah, it turns out I'm not. Uh, I was terrified of like making a call to like a doctor's appointment or like having to like call to like fix something on my computer. So these classes really force you to step outside your comfort zone and outside your bubble and make sure that you get that real life experience. So a big step with that, like I mentioned before, was networking. I last year, even two years ago, I probably would have never reached out to people to be like, hey, can we just chat about like the marketing industry or anything like that. So it really comes with kind of that customer service aspect of marketing yourself in a way that is desirable to people and also showing that you do have the ability to step outside your comfort zone and make those connections and take the first step as well. So honestly, that has been the biggest skill that I probably picked up through my classes, my internship, uh, any on-campus jobs that I've had as well. I think for me, one of the most meaningful things that I picked up from this experience was just the kind of the art of communication, kind of like Rose was talking about a little bit. Um, just like today in the world we live in, we don't just communicate, you know, face to face or, or whatever, We're communicating through screens, just kind of like we are today. So learning how to communicate with everybody in multiple ways is, is really been the thing that I've taken away the most and how to make the, the most of that as well. I think employers going forward are going to appreciate um, people who are able to adapt to all the different ways we can communicate, uh, whether that be through email, text messages, phone call, or through Zoom meetings, kind of like this, they're replacing, you know, all the business trips that people would have went on in the past. Um, everything's kind of done remote. And so being able to get the same experience out of something like, like this compared to if it was an in-person event, I think is something that um, I'm gonna take with me and that's what I learned the most from. Yeah, so similar to Rose and Mark, um, communication is something that um, I've gained and strengthened over my time here at River Falls. I also come similar to Rose, I seem to come across as like a very like outgoing, um, person, but I'm also terrified to call people and like, um, just make those like first initial steps. And so I think through like my internship, um, classes and emailing professors through like all the different organizations that I have been a part of, um, communication has been a huge, um, thing. So I just being able to learn and understand how, um, employers would like us to communicate and how to communicate professionally is something that um, I've strengthened over my past four years at River Falls. So 
that's something I will take with me after I'm done with my time. So. For sure. Um, definitely when reflecting on some of the skills that um, getting involved has kind of helped me better. I, the first thing that really comes to my mind is the idea of management. Now, if any of you guys know me, I'm kind of the type of person where if, if I don't write something down, I will forget it. And sometimes being in these email chains that are intertwined in my, um, in my personal life, if you'd right now go on my phone and look at Instagram, you'd see that I'm logged in to about five different profiles that I pretty much weekly will have different posting schedules for and things like that. And that can get out of hand really quick. Just like I mentioned, being in some of these email chains where people are talking about posts and stories, it's really easy for me to be like, wait what account are we even talking about? So I, um, something I've really definitely improved is kind of just taking a step back, kind of forming my own way of organization so that I can obviously always hit like my posting deadlines, just have a clear structure for what I'm working on at that time. And it definitely also would help me like prioritize. Um, that kind of bringing my next thing being um, prioritization and just kind of the idea of time management. So um, something that in the marketing world, we always just kind of come to realize and I've feel my life at student involvement more and more every day when we kind of just think about cool things and have to execute on the spot. Time is real. That being said, there's only so much time in the day. So there's occasionally moments where sometimes you're going to have to figure out how to prioritize, figure out what things you think you really want to put your effort into and maybe what things you need to sacrifice a little bit. Um, and this kind of brings me to a next point of something that I'm probably definitely still working on myself is then the idea of kind of realizing when you only have so much time and you have to prioritize something, being able to reach out and just kind of ask your, your teammates, your coworkers, your peers, anybody, just for some extra help. You know, a lot of people are kind of, myself included, are sometimes not the best at realizing when your plate's a little bit full and you just kind of try and chip away at the iceberg by yourself. But sometimes with time being real, that does become an impossibility. Um, something else I think I've definitely bettered myself at over my four years here is obviously myself being a marketing student, something I've really worked on is just kind of the awareness of the marketing environment. Um, again, like I mentioned, I, I post on multiple different social media schedules and things like that. So really just being able to kind of look at that content, take a step, step, step back um, and just kind of seeing, you know, what students are actually replying to, what's really actually bringing that engagement. And then just kind of being, um, being able to adapt around that and change the content based on what the needs of the students are. So that level of adaption is something that's, um, always important. You always have to be ready to change because if you're not moving, you are probably doing something wrong. Well, and I think pivot is the big word of this last year. So your ability to adapt, Jonah, that served you well, I'm sure through 2020 and, and still. Um, I just want to, I'm curious if there is anything else that you've done to help prepare you for post-graduation. I know we've talked about all kinds of activities and experiences and the things you've learned from those, but if there were any other steps that you took to prepare for post-graduation, I'd be interested in what those were. Um, we'll start with Mark for this one. Sure. Uh, one thing I guess that I always did, and I really appreciate career services for this, is having the, the career fairs in the fall and in the spring. I always tried to make it a point to go down uh, to the career fair and even the social the night before. I'm uh, just kind of like we've been talking about with the networking to, to meet new people. And then just to, to find an internship, you kind of, it's a great way to get some experience in the industry and kind of narrow down kind of what you want when you get done with graduation what kind of job are you looking for i mean for for me in agriculture there's a lot of different things that i can do uh, with my degree there's a lot of different fields pardon the pun to to go into and so going to the career fair and getting experience with internships through multiple years uh, really helped me out um, as well one of the other things that I, I did this semester is I um, took and passed the Wisconsin Certified Cropping Advisor exam. Um, so that really helps to separate um, agronomists like me from other um, people coming out of college. It's kind of like a, a board exam for agronomists, so to say. Um, so it just kind of separates me. It gives me, me the ability to write uh, nutrient management plans and then just to, to demonstrate my knowledge so people know uh, when they see that title, uh, that I, I know what I'm doing. And I really, 
Um, got to give a shout out to the agronomy program here at River Falls for that, um, because the test is, is really difficult. There's a 30% pass rate on the, the first try. And I felt, you know, the college really set me up well for the test and uh, so that I could pass on the first try. So I really got to thank them for that. That's amazing. Way to go. Yeah, so I'm also going to shout out Career Services. Another really awesome thing that Career Services does for um, students is they look over your um, resumes. So I um, was in the process of applying to grad schools and I um, went to Career Services to have them look over my resume to see like what I could change, what I could add to um, show the reviewers of my schools um, that I'm applying to, um, just who I am truly as a person and highlight all the amazing things that I have done, not only at River Falls, but outside of River Falls. So that has prepared me um, for like the additional steps. And it's happy, I'm happy to say that I have been accepted into two schools so far um, with um, the help of career services, so. That's awesome. Which two schools, Lauren? Um, I got accepted into St. Thomas and St. Kate's and St. Paul. Nice. For sure. I'm kind of picking off, uh, piggybacking off what these two have already said. Um, McKenna, I'm starting to think that you might have put this question in here just to get some obviously well-earned praise for yourself and career no, services. No, Jonah, I wouldn't do that. It's <laughs> well, I'm happy to oblige. <laughs> I'm happy to oblige and kind of continue to try to talk about all the amazing work yourself and the rest of the faculty and career services does. Um, some awesome steps I've hit, taken to get myself ready for post um, post school life is definitely utilize many of the on campus events offered by the illustrious career services. Um, and I, I think I want to frame this even in the in, in the way that I you can really use these events just for straight up practice practicing communication in a professional environment. So I, I often think about like mock interviews and obviously the career fair, even if you, um, like the career fair, for example, even if you're going to go and don't end up leading with, you know, the job you're choosing or an internship or anything, what you did get was practice, which in itself is already extremely valuable. It's um, this kind of professional communication is really something you don't really run into on your day to day basis. So getting um, having campus events that you can attend and just kind of go practice that is definitely something that is always worthwhile to do. Even if you're, you know, look, not looking to get a job right now, or, you know, if you're just like a first year student, and you think it might be kind of daunting to go with career fair, do it. It's practice. It's great. It'll give you a better idea for what that kind of communication will look like in the future when you're actually trying to kind of score your, your job. Um, something else I think I've been doing is definitely taking advantage of some career readiness activities within my, um, within my major. So I would like to point out like our senior seminar class here at River Falls for the Marcom program uh, has you do a bunch of kind of just personal branding aspects that are definitely um, super important for somebody who's really trying to put themselves out there as a marketing professional. Something like creating a digital portfolio, learning and um, attending networking events, to kind of again, practice that communication, learn what it looks like, and then even building your own personal brand website are just some of the requirements of that class that really I think just kind of prepared me for being able to network and put myself out there in the future. On kind of a different note, um, I do love career services, but I am going to talk about the Office of International Education. I did study abroad two springs ago, so spring 2020. Uh, my ongoing joke in my tour introductions is that if you were thinking about evacuating a country in two days, I wouldn't recommend it. It's not a whole lot of fun, um, uh, but really studying abroad was something I always wanted to do but just thought I would never get the courage to do it. So I was really proud of myself for going to it, but it gave me a lot of different skills just because of everything that happened over that semester. Uh, got a good sense of independence finally. I mean, you get it at college, but when you're across the world in a different country, um, I did go to Scotland. It was an amazing experience, but like there's no option of going home or like relying on those things that you used to like fall back on as well. It also helps with a lot of organization skills. If you're gonna travel, you need to have good organization skills. It's ridiculous. You need to have good budgeting as well. So I got a lot of skills from that. Um, also kind of like we've talked about a general theme of having COVID in our world right now is adaptability. I did not prefer to have to book a flight home for the next day and change all of my flights, pack everything up, 
finish everything I had to do there, but like I had to do it because I had to go home. So, uh, I mean, it was a really great experience. I would have loved to stay in Scotland for the semester, but I still got a lot of great skills from it, from taking that chance of going there. And it ultimately paid off really well. Such a horizon broadening experience. Um, okay, one other question that I'm curious about is now that we're 60 some days away from graduation, when you look back at your time at the RIV, is there anything you wish you would have done differently? And Lauren, I'm gonna have you kick off this one. Yeah, um, honestly, this is gonna be a kind of a cliche answer, but honestly, I don't think I would change anything about my time at River Falls. Um, River Falls, has been such a good um, school and I'm glad um, in 60 something days, I will be a proud alumni of this school and forevermore, I will speak so highly of this school and everything that they have gave to me. So no, I wouldn't change anything. <laughs> um, unlike Lauren, I think there are some things I would wanna change, but much like Lauren, my answer is also going to be cliche. Um, I really would, um, if I were to do it over, I really just would have gotten involved earlier than I really did. Um, just kind of looking at everything I'm involved in now and just kind of how I got my way to be part of all these awesome programs and sit in all these different positions. It really was just kind of a domino effect that once I got involved with one thing, it just kind of led me to a faculty member who would then invite me to something else, which got me recognized to be able to be part of this event and just cause, uh, was definitely just kind of like um, just kind of planting a seed by getting involved in one thing and just watching it sprout into a bunch of different avenues. So I really would have just gotten involved earlier. I definitely agree with that. I think I came into my freshman year thinking that this, I just need to focus on classes. I'm not getting involved in anything. I don't have time for anything else, which is honestly the biggest lie I ever sold myself. Um, I had plenty of time to go join different clubs, join an intramural, find an on-campus job, literally anything like that. So now that I have all this going on in my life between being an RA, a Falcon guide, taking classes, graduating, uh, on campus work, like it's not that hard to manage. And it's a great opportunity if you can take it as early as you can as well. I mean, it's led to so many more different things that like I help with the Res Life social media now as well because of being an RA. I get to go to events like this of literally making a podcast. I'm going to sit in on a panel between, um, it's a panel between res life and admissions office as well so there's a lot of great things you can do here and I'm also graduating a full year early so that time got cut down really short for me I don't have that extra year to get more involved and pretty much live this great year all the way over again but hopefully not in a pandemic so really just get involved early don't be afraid of like time management or anything like that I think I'm going to kind of be like Lauren and the fact that I don't think there's really a lot I would change from the uh, time I've been here at River Falls. I've really tried to make the most of it, getting involved in different organizations and uh, kind of like Jonah playing a lot of intramurals, having fun doing that. Um, maybe one thing I, I guess I would change, I never did go on a study abroad trip. Um, I knew a lot of people that went to like India or Argentina. Um, I think that would have been kind of cool just to kind of see a, a more diverse culture, you know, a lot different than what we see here. Um, and just get to see a different part of the world. I always enjoy getting out and, and driving and seeing the scenery around the US. And so seeing a different part of the world like that, I think would have been really cool. And you may have touched on this a little bit in this last answer, but I think it would be nice if we rounded out our time together by talking about what advice we would have um, for your peers. So Jonah, I'm gonna have you kick us off with this one. Yeah, for sure. Um, if I had to give advice to any students just really looking to get kind of career ready, it would be a very straight and simple answer. Just do stuff and share it, right? 
So I just do stuff, just get involved. Um, it, it, if anybody, um, as a marketer here, I've, there's something I've learned, which is um, kind of marketing is a constant communication, right? It's what, it'd be one thing to put up a sign that says, hey, hire me. It's a completely different answer, uh, animal to have that hire me sign up there, but then follow it up with, you know, weekly, weekly showcases of the things you're doing, the things you're involved with, the people you work, and just really showing yourself to be a uh, productive and just useful member that will, you know, organizations will look at very favorably. Um, and then the other half of that being share it is kind of um, weird as it sounds in this age of, you know, technology and social media and all these things. Um, you know, if you do something, it doesn't do you as much benefit if nobody knows you did it. So really, you know, get some pictures, share it, post it on LinkedIn, just get it attached to your name so people can just see that you're doing all this amazing stuff. So just whatever you do, just keep on doing stuff and share it because people love to see what everyone, everyone's working on. My biggest advice, um, I think everyone has a fear of rejection nowadays for whatever reason, but honestly, just apply for it. Apply for the job you're unqualified for. I was not nearly qualified for the internship and I got it. Apply for a study abroad trip. You want to take those chances, like studying abroad is a once in a lifetime opportunity you'd get in college. You're literally pretty much working while you're traveling. Apply for any organization you want to be a part of. I'm sad that I didn't apply for more, like I mentioned. Apply for on-campus jobs. If you think you'd be a good RA, I would highly recommend it. If you want to be a tour guide, be a tour guide. If you literally want to work in the cafeteria, do that. It's, the fear of rejection, I think, holds a lot of people back, and I let it hold me back for an entire year, and it just wasn't worth it. So even if you don't think you're qualified for something, you probably are, and you should just apply for it. I'm going to kind of echo what Rose said earlier and uh, with getting involved early. I mean, uh, I was lucky I had a, a brother that was a couple years ahead of me here that kind of had learned a little bit and then passed some of his knowledge on to me on how to get involved and, and what to get involved. And I would think one thing I would tell people is don't be afraid to get involved right away. Um, I First semester freshman year, I started going to Collegiate Farm Bureau and Crop and Soil Club meetings and, and playing intramurals. And I think it really makes the transition to college from high school a lot easier as well, because you're getting out and you're meeting new people and you really feel like you're finding a place on campus. So right away, uh, just get involved because you get uh, kind of a head start of, in front of a lot of other people. And so you can learn more and have maybe even more opportunities than others as you get to be an upperclassman. Yeah, so to round out um, our time, I think one piece of advice I would give is use um, on-campus resources. Um, here at River Falls, we have so many. We have career services, counseling, tutoring. Um, the list is an endless one. And I think that a lot of them have a good, um, strong knowledge of stuff that will help you um, throughout not only your time at River Falls, but also um, postgraduate. So use it, um, it's a great resource. So use it, use it, use it. <laughs> I love it. Such good advice. Uh, the four of you were so gracious to share all about your experiences. And in 60 days, you will-ish will leave the RIV and embark on new journeys. So congratulations. And you can be so proud of all that you've achieved and participated in in your time at River Falls. So thank you so much. Take care.